Hello everybody, so my name is Killian. I'm a PhD candidate at University of New South Wales, Sydney. And today's talk will be on um, how to estimate beach slopes using satellite derived shorelines. So here we have uh, two pictures of very uh, different uh, beaches. So one is Blackpool Sands in the UK, uh, where the beach slope is very steep. It's, it's a gravel beach and it's about 0 0.2. And then on the other side, we have a cable beach in Western Australia, which has a very gentle slope, so about 0 0.02. So the idea here is to use uh, the tidal excursion signal uh, to estimate the beach slope. So just before uh, we start uh, with the beach slope uh, algorithm, uh, I'll introduce COSAT, which is the open source to toolbox that we'll be using to extract uh, the satellite derived shoreline. So it's been um, developed last year and it uses Google Earth Engine to access publicly available imagery over the last 30 years. And we have validated uh, this method against uh, in situ shoreline data. And the horizontal accuracy of the, the shorelines that, were, that are extracted with this toolbox is between 10 and 15 meters. So before we start, um, what is the beach face slope for us here? So for this method, um, we'll use a definition of the beach phase slope, which is the regression slope along the profile between uh, mean sea level and mean high water springs. And this is a very important parameter uh, in a number of um, coastal engineering uh, formulations, for example, coastal inundation or run-up equations. And often uh, it's a limitation uh, because we don't have this parameter uh, at large spatial scales. So when we do global inundation studies, uh, often uh, either use a slope independent run-up equations or assume a, a constant value. In this example, Melet et al. 2018, they use 0 0.1. Um, and finally, the, the, our starting point for this work is that we needed the beach slope to totally correct satellite derived shorelines. So I'll show a quick example. So this is Cable Beach in Western Australia. Uh, the tidal range here is eight meters, spring tidal range. And so we'll see how the satellite derived shorelines are really uh, influenced by the tidal stage at which um, each image is taken. We have this very uh, large tidal excursion. So if we put a transect somewhere and extract the, the cross shore shoreline change, uh, we get this very noisy data where this signal that we have here, it's mainly the tide going up and down. And this is not very useful for us as coastal engineers, but if we know the beach slope along that transect, we can remove the tidal signal and then we get something that is more insightful. So here we can see uh, some seasonal changes in the shoreline on this, tra along this transect. So uh, there has been some work done uh, on intertidal digital elevation models by Bishop Taylor uh, and co-authors. And uh, well, these uh, intertidal DMs work really well in macrotidal areas. Uh, they tend to struggle along microtidal uh, wave-dominated uh, coastlines. And here, here is why that's just a quick um, diagram showing what, what the issue is here that we're trying to solve. So if we take a concrete beach, so imagine it's completely static, and we, we have satellite images taking measurements of the shoreline at different stages of the tide, uh, we'll be able to reconstruct the profile. So if this is a low tide image, it's a high tide image, and then we take 30 years of imagery, and then we can reconstruct the intertidal profile, because it's not moving over time. And then we can also estimate the beach flow with the linear fit, for example. But now if we take real data, so now this is Narabin data, uh, we have erosion and accretion of this profile. So the actual um, sample water levels look more like this. So there's a lot of scatter. And this scatter makes it very hard to reconstruct the intertidal profile and estimate the slope. Um, so a linear fit would not work here. So we're trying to come up with a new method that incorporates this um, erosion and accretion processes uh, for estimating the beach load. Um, so our idea was to move from time to frequency domain. Uh, and I'll use a synthetic case to explain how this works. So we will create a, a synthetic beach 
uh, with a fixed slope of 0 0.1 and a 1.5 meter tidal range. And so we'll take the tide uh, levels at this beach and subsample them as if uh, they were subsampled by satellite. So weekly sample, and then because uh, we have cloud cover obstructing uh, the satellite imagery, um, we're gonna drop randomly 25% uh, of the data. And then we'll convert these tidal levels to a horizontal tidal excursion along the profile. So we divide by the beach slope. So now this is horizontal um, excursion along the profile. And then we will also add some um, shoreline, uh, some beach, chain, beach erosion accretion change to this profile. So it will also translate horizontally. So we have a very simple signal, so just a seasonal uh, shoreline change signal with 20 meter amplitude. And as uh, beach systems are very noisy, we also add some white noise. So now if we combine these two, we get our resulting uh, shoreline change signal. Um, okay. So now we'll take this shoreline change signal and we'll um, transform it to frequency domain. But there's just a quick parenthesis here is that because this signal is an evenly sampled, um, we cannot use a classic Fourier transform because it only applies to evenly sampled signals. But we can use an alternative, which is a long scargo transform, which was developed by an astronomist, and it's able to compute the power spectrum density of an irregularly sampled signal. So for example, here, if we do the power spectrum density of the subsample tides, um, we, we, we can see that, uh, so we're sampling at seven days, so our Nyquist limit is 14 days. Then the first peak that we have is the spring nip uh, cycle at 14.8 uh, days. And then we have a solar annual signal as well. So now we can go to our uh, synthetic shoreline time series and uh, convert them to um, frequency domain. So we can see, Okay, the main peak is the seasonality, so it's a one-year peak. Then we have white noise, which by definition has equal energy at all frequencies. And then we have this very interesting peak here at 14.8 days, which is our tidal excursion signal. So now the idea of this technique um, is to test different slopes and use those slopes for tidal correction and see what happens um, in the frequency domain. So let's say um, we, we don't know the slope at this side, so we're gonna try different slopes. So for example, we can try uh, 0 0.2. So adding a tidal correction is just adding the tidal levels divided by the beach slope. So I can do a tidal correction with a 0 0.2 slope. So we can see here um, the new time series, and then you can see the new power spectrum and the seasonal signal stays the same, everything stays the same except the style excursion signal here where the peak is uh, reduced because we've removed some of the tidal excursion signal from the shoreline time series. So if we, tr if we try a different slope, we will eventually try 0 0.1, which is the actual beach slope, and now we can see that that peak is completely suppressed. And if we keep reducing the slope to 0 0.05, uh, for example, now because the slope is too too gentle, we're actually adding a new uh, tidal signal. So here we see that the, the red peak is uh, increasing again. So so that's the idea behind this technique: is we're just going to apply tidal correction with a range of beach slopes and look at uh, what happens to the tidal energy in the shoreline time series, and find the slope that minimizes the tidal energy. So here's how the algorithm works uh, with real data. So this is the cable beach that I was showing you at the beginning of the talk. So we have the raw time series of shoreline change. We use a global tide model to get the corresponding water levels. Then we apply a, a tidal correction with a range of slopes. And then uh, we also identify what is the frequency at which the tidal signal is the strongest. And uh, then we can compute the power spectrum density for all this uh, ensemble of time of tidally corrected time series and uh, look at the energy inside that frequency band. And so 
um, if we do the integral inside that uh, frequency band for each different slope, uh, we'll have the energy and we'll see that the energy will be minimized for a, a certain value of the slope. So in this case, it's 0 0.025, which completely suppresses uh, that peak. So that will be our estimate of the beach slope. So we validated this technique um, at a range of sites uh, worldwide. And uh, here's the, the, the validation. So in this plot, uh, on the x-axis, we have the in-situ beach slope. And the in-situ uh, surveyed beach, beach slope varies over time as well. So the horizontal bars here highlight the temporal variability. So one standard deviation, the temporal variability at each uh, transect. And then on the y-axis, we have the satellite-derived beach slope, which is a single estimate uh, for the 30 years. So we see that overall, uh, it's uh, doing a good job at estimating the beach slope. Uh, it's doing really well for the very steep and very flat um, slopes. But then there's a bit more scatter at these intermediate sites, which are also characterized by more temporal variability. We see the wider uh, standard deviation bars. So after uh, validating this method against um, field data, uh, we applied it over a regional scale. So uh, we mapped satellite derived shorelines for the entire southeast coast uh, of Australia and also at the Californian uh, coastline. And um, we applied this method at each transect and obtained a distribution of the beach phase slope for these two uh, different coastlines. And we can see that both, based on this method, both of them have a similar uh, distribution with a mean around 0 0.06, which is much lower than um, what was used in global studies, um, so the 0 0.1 value. So finally, the slope data that we generated uh, here at the regional scale uh, is available online at coastsat.wrl.uns.edu.au. And so it's a web dashboard where you can uh, go to a specific site and look at the beach uh, slopes along different transects. And you can also click on the transects and look at the uh, shoreline time series. So that's all for uh, the beach slope presentation. Um, and I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you very much.